Hello again, everybody. This is Bobby Mills for TheIndependent.com with another year of End Zone Online. As usual, tradition, we're at Grand Island Senior High with legendary future Hall of Fame coach Jeff Tomlin. How are you, coach? <laughs> I'm doing great, Bobby. Good to see you. Good to see you. Always Absolutely. great. Man, I am so glad I'm here. Well, thanks for coming. We're yeah, we love to have you all the time. Thank you. With things going on, man, we're just going to go forward. Do right. it to it, right? Yeah, we're going to forge ahead. What? So, is this your 18th year at senior? High? This is my 18th year, believe it or not, at senior high. Um, yeah, of course, I've been. You've been here a while, but it just doesn't seem like 18 years. And really, uh, to me, it it's flown by. Good. You know, good. Both my both my kids are, are senior high graduates, and and uh, uh, they've been great to me here. Um, the community is an awesome place. It's my home. Yeah. You know, it's not my town, but I, I, I think it's my home. It fits me well. Um, yeah. And uh, hopefully I'm a good fit, and, and we just get good, tough kids, and they play hard for us. Well, we think so, anyway. Yeah, they will. And, and you know, this guy was such a legend at Alliance, but, you know, when, you, when a coach like that can call this town home, we're really happy about that, and you must be. So. Oh, I love it. So absolutely love GI. You know, and and the kids graduating from here makes a big difference. It so. does. It does. It gives you more roots and more more of a hometown feeling. So I, you know, before we get started, and I think I ask you this every year: the changes in the game. I have a question for you in that regard. Right. The size of a line when you came to GI was it 2003, possibly 2003. Like yes, sir. Okay, what would have been a good average size for an offensive defensive line then, as compared to 2020? Well, I think if I if I think back to our 2003 uh, offensive line, we probably we had one pretty good sized young man at tackle, but we were mainly in the in the 205 to yeah. 215 range. I suppose probably a little undersized, but but not. As undersized as what that would be now. Yeah. Now, yeah. you know, I feel like it, our 2018 offensive line was pretty darn good, yes. but undersized by many people's standards because we were, you know, 195 at center, 215 at right tackle, That's and 210 at one guard, and then we had a couple bigger boys that kind of made the average look a little bit better. Yep. So we've always. Um, We'll take big boys if we can get them. Yeah, you know, well, no sure, sure. You know, we aren't going to turn them away, uh, but we don't seem to get quite as many uh, for whatever reason. But we're able to, uh, you know, just uh, develop them strength-wise and, and technique-wise, so they're pretty darn good. That, that's uh, I think that was the key to. I don't remember which championship it was. Maybe the Creighton Prep Championship. Uh, it was more technique than it was just just weight, you know, and that's a long time ago, 78 maybe? 78, yeah. So, I mean, that, you know, those kids knew the technique thing, and and uh, so I, that's, GI I think is known for that, so they don't have a so. bunch of 300 pound kids roaming around. Right. Um, and that would have been, a, I'm sorry to say this, I would have been a fat kid back in 2003. Sure. I mean, that would have been good. Uh, can he play? Well, maybe back in my day, but, you know, I'm sure they would have developed here, but uh, yeah, that, that's a that's an interesting thing to see that happen. They're really, yeah, the size of players, you know, the the spread, the evolution of the spread offense, yes. and all the different variations, you know, come, you know, in the last 18 years has been a, kind of amazing. Yeah. To see, and then the high tempo, uh, no huddle type of stuff, and then there there are trends on defense now, a lot of pressure type of trends that we're starting to see. So it's an ever changing game. You yeah. got to keep up with it. I can I can see the pressure thing on defense. You got to have to this day and age. You do. You really do. So uh, everybody's going to ask you this question with all of the things that were going on with the COVID thing, the kids not being able to go to school. Do you think your kids will be physically prepared as well as they were a year ago, or is that asking too much? I th I think for anybody uh, that will maybe set the bar too high. Yeah. I feel pretty good about our fitness level. Sure. But when you lose a track season, oh. you know, and how much development a kid can get physically over track, yeah. soccer, when you lose that and you lose um, some of the some of the intensity that you, you gain through camps and, and di different things that we haven't been able to do, we'll be, I think, in uh, as good a condition, as, as fit as we possibly can, given the circumstances. Our kids have worked really hard. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, to say we're at the same place where we were the last several years would, would not be accurate. Well, it, it, my, my 
view on the thing is that everybody else is in the same boat. Yes. I hope. I mean, who could be cheated? Who could cheat during the COVID thing? I mean, yeah. where would you go? To, I, so everybody else is probably in the same kind of thing. I think so. And, and the game will be, you know, it, it'll be still a great football. I mean, football is going to be a great thing. We didn't work out during this summer when sure. I was, we didn't have weight rooms. Well, sure, you you, you worked in the hay field or you Bar, tasseled or you bells or whatever. Yeah. If you did dead. whatever you could do. And yeah, I mean, it's a yeah. different, obviously different now, but you know, we posted uh, on. Uh, we gave our kids suggestions during the shutdown. Well, yeah. Well, here's some suggestions on what you can do if you have weights at home. If but you no. don't have weights at home, yeah. Here's some suggestions running, but it was basically up to the kid sure. whether they really wanted to get after it or not. I think when we got them back on June 1st, I was pleasantly surprised. Good. That That's good. I would say 65, 70 percent of our kids, it was evident they had done something. Good. You they know, they want to play, man. Yeah, they do. And that's part of the tradition building thing that you've got, so that's a great deal. So, what's your offense going to look like this year? Obviously, you've lost some great players from a year ago, but it never seems to be a problem here. I mean, well, there's always somebody that Coach Tomlin has to plug in. Well, I'm, I'm pretty uh, pretty pleased with how things have gone so far just in our little install camp. Sure. Uh, but we'll have a lot of holes to fill. You're, you're exactly right. Uh, you lose a Caleb Francois, you lose a Brock Douglas, you lose players of that caliber, then you got some holes to fill, no doubt. Um, Jaden Jergensmeyer and uh, Kite Fife feel really good about a quarterback. Yeah. Uh, they can they can both run our squad. They can both run our offense, and, and they've been working exceptionally hard. Uh, we do have experience on the line, which I'm grateful for. A lot of years, Boy. You, you can't necessarily say that. And in any year where you want a little experience, it'd be this year. Yes, on absolutely. You know, we'll be fairly green in all other positions. We'll have a lot of new receivers um, that didn't see a lot of playing time, but we're, we're eager to, to see what they can do. They have a lot of potential. Um, we're going to do backfield by committee. Dale and Caleb on a play in the backfield. Boy. And uh, that's, a, that's, another, <laughs> that's another story right there. We'll get back to Dale. Uh, Jace Crispin will play in the backfield. Brian Vasquez. Uh, has a great potential in the backfield. Bo Walker has great potential. So we have four guys that we think varsity level wise have a lot of potential back there. Another question that just came up in my head, and I think I, I had it down here. What do you feel? Has your attitude changed about younger kids playing, or or the differences in speed levels between varsity, reserve, JVs? to the point where you can play some sophomores now? You know, I, I really feel like if a sophomore's ready, we'll, we'll figure out a way to get him on the field yep. and play him and let him contribute. This year makes it a little harder. Yeah. Just because of the, you know, we didn't get a full contact camp. Oh, I know. You know oh, where, yes. Where you get to actually see a kid in pads, that type of thing. So um, it may become evident maybe a week or two later than normal. I know. But I do think there's some potential there where a couple sophomores could step up and fill a role for us. I think that's a rare thing in Class A. And it some, really is. Boy, and a freshman is like... Yeah, I, freshman's I, almost unheard of, but, but you hear of some each year, a couple. Yeah, just a couple, and that's, you know, it's got to be maybe a dad was a great football sure. player or something. And he's a monster already, but... Uh, but the line, if I was going to start a football team and I'm no coach, I'd sure want a line before anything else. I really would. On either side of the ball, man. And maybe, you know, you're a defensive line coach, so that's probably what you'd like, you know. Yeah, the you experience, always, if you're going to return experience, I prefer to have it in that up front. Then you can nurture your guys in the you backfield and bring them along a little more slowly. But, uh, hey, if you've got a great backfield and no line, guess what? Yeah, yeah it's going to be hard, tough sled. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm grateful for the kids we have up front. They're they're uh, blue-collar kids, and they're working hard and pushing each other, and I think they're going to be fit Good. and as strong as they can be. We got uh, Coach uh, Patrick Doyle, our new strength coach, has done a great job this summer Good. with the kids, so we're really excited about having him. Where's he from? Uh, he's from Beatrice originally. I wondered, yeah. And, uh, yeah, he, he uh, would be a Bob Sexton and Jim Weeks product. That's you know, what as I was. Yeah. An athlete, and, and yeah. he's been a uh, UNL grad. Yeah. And interned and then a Pittsburgh State GA Ooh. in strength. And That's a tough place. Boy, he's, been, uh, he's been he's uh, been through some good good programs. No so kidding. He yeah. offers our kids a lot. Good. And what about the defense? You have you have some some people coming back there. We do. We don't have uh, 
many on offense. We have two or three linemen that have good experience. But on defense, we do have some experience. Uh, Dalen Caleb on. <coughs> How do you play running back and nose guard? I mean, you know, that's the like most, quarterback uh, and DN, you know? Yeah, the most dynamic player I've ever coached. Well, I and, I, and that's saying something. Oh my but as far gosh. as dynamic, uh, just like you said, he can play nose guard. He can stand up and play linebacker. Um, he's got the best hands on the team, or some of the best hands on the team, catching the ball in the backfield. He oh. can run for. He can run for tough yards. Um, just a phenomenal and a very dynamic young man. So you put put Dalen in there. Alex Meister saw a lot of action. Not a starter, but he saw a ton of action on the D line. So he'll come back. Ben Francel started every game at middle linebacker. So Ben's back, and Ben more than anybody else has transformed his body. Wow. Just basic physical maturation. He's just getting more mature, and then the hard work he puts in. Yeah. He doesn't look like he did as a sophomore A lethal last year. combination, boy. He's, uh, he's really been good. So um, secondary-wise, Alex Hinkin returns yeah. uh, and played some great corner for us. Uh, Brian Vasquez, Bo Walker, Brandon Fox, those guys are all in, in a battle for that other corner spot. Yep. Kite and Fife's, you know, right now our best safety. Wow. Uh, as well as, as, as an excellent quarterback. Sure. Uh, Drew Holfelt's in the line of safety. Dylan Sextro's in line of safety. Those are good names. Uh, so we've got, we've got some good quality kids back there, but I like uh, when you can say your nose is, is an all-state caliber kid. And then it all it all stems from there. If you're tough up the middle, oh goodness, you can yes. you can do some pretty good things. Oh yeah. So I'm really looking forward to how our kids perform. What's what's Dalen going to weigh in at? Uh, Dalen will be a, between 215 and 220. And that's solid. Isn't Very it? solid. Very solid. <laughs> you don't want to call him a name and run. I'll guarantee you that. Name and Christmas. So who, tell me about your coaching staff once again. I think it's worth mentioning all of these it guys is. because you've got a great staff. We right. really do. I, I've been blessed. I wouldn't wouldn't be in a great situation that I'm in without great assistants. Who and my, my policy, Bobby's always been hire guys smarter than myself. That's never been hard for me. That must be hard to do. That's never been hard for me. <laughs> I'm, I'm batting a thousand on that. Oh, come on. a thousand. So you start off with Russ Harvey, who's been with me for 18 years. Uh, how could it get better? I get down on my Harvey. hands and knees and pray that you were him to quit. You know, I, you know, Har Harv is Harv. Yes. He, he's the best in the business. He is. And, uh, our offensive line coach, Clint Cunningham, is, is unbelievable. Most of our coaching staff has been together at least a dozen years, if not more. So oh that really goodness. helps. Cody Wheeler's our running backs coach. Uh, we promoted Grant, Grant Boyer from our head freshman coach. Now he's coaching our inside receivers. Just like you mentioned. Yeah. He, re he replaced uh, Kirby Wells. Um, and then uh, DJ Plotz has been with us five, six years now. He's our wide receivers coach and does a great job. So we feel like our offensive staff is, is really, really sound. Uh, we added a, a great volunteer, Steve Strand. Yeah. Who's going to be at bar as as a GIPS social worker? Um, he was a, a pretty successful receiver at Four Hayes. Yeah, I didn't know he and was. And he's guy. working in our district, yeah. and, and it was willing to volunteer and wants to be in there for the kids Can't and has worked that. with us all summer. So we like that defensively. Um, Jason Jones is with me. Oh, maybe 14th, going into his 14th or 15th year. Uh, as defensive line coach and just tremendous. Kyle Carter's our middle linebackers coach. Kyle uh, learned middle linebacker play under Coach Ermacher. Oh Coach Ermacher was with us. Wow. So Kyle's been with me a long time. Yeah. And, uh, uh, he's the brains of the operation on, on defense. Um, Jeff McQuinn's our outside linebackers coach. Paul Cloutier is our special teams coordinator and our safeties coach. And I'm back to coaching cornerbacks. Okay. So I coached the corners, and, and uh, Chris Couser for years did our DBs. Yeah. And then when he got his head coaching job at Sydney, I moved myself to DBs from the yeah from the linebacker D line area. So I thought he did a good job back there. He yeah. really did. Yeah. He really did. But so you, I'm, I'm blessed to have them. They're yeah. great, great bunch of men of integrity, and they work with kids really well. Well, when you can get a, get that, that experience like that for a dozen years together, yes. man. Uh, we kind of know 
what the other guys think of it, which which really helps. Makes those meetings go smoother, doesn't it? It does, and then they they're they're guys that think like head coaches, and yeah. that well, coach probably needs this done. So they're just see the need, fill the need. They don't wait to be told, hey, this needs done, guys. Uh, they're already getting it done. Just takes time. So man. it's it's a dream. Well, it's a dream great. for me. Can't beat that. Can't beat it. What about the schedule this year? Anything different? I mean, it's, it's always tough. It's always tough. You don't get what you yeah. want for sure every time. Maybe not. Maybe never. You know, I I learned a long time ago. Those those great folks at the NSA do the very best they can uh, with a very very tough job. And so, hey, you it's on your schedule. Get ready and prepare. But that's it. There's nothing. And so uh, we like it. Uh, obviously, we lead off with Carney, who's going to be excellent, as they always are. Go to Pius, go to Lincoln Southeast, uh, to Fremont, to West Side, to Millard North. You know, yeah, you got a lot of quality opponents. Yeah, there. more and folk back on the schedule. Cool. Uh, long time. Tom's still up there. Yeah, Tom's oh, yeah. still. Okay. You know, leading that program, and and what a what a great mentor he's been up there for a lot of years. He is. What about this place across the street, man? Is it going to be, if, well, it won't be totally finished, will it? It won't be. The east side will not be finished, but the west side will be completely done. Uh, underneath the concourse, the locker rooms, everything, press boxes will be completely done. So uh, we're, we're truly blessed. The, the Martin family and uh, the generous donors from the community. Um, you know, I, I've told our kids a couple times, so we, we, we need to really be grateful. And this needs to be treated like a sanctuary. Oh gosh, yes, like a tabernacle, if you will. Yeah. You know, because uh, it's named after Coach Ken Fisher. That's all I need to that's say. That's all you need. Well, that's all we. That's all we need to know, and they yeah. should know. Yeah. And I said we can't get entitled. You know, we've kind of built a, we built our program on being tough and blue collar, and and in some kind of older, outdated facilities. But our kids have yeah. kind of embraced that tradition, and I don't want them getting spoiled in the new. No, but we are going to be very, very grateful. Yeah. Over. Yep. And Absolutely. I, how, how, you know, how far off am I? I didn't know that they, that place was going to have locker rooms. Yes. I will miss seeing this team run out of. You know, it's going to be like out. I told our coaches for this whole season. It's going to be like we're on the road. I know every it's, game. I know what because, you know, not, Coach Fisher started closing this East Gym off <laughs> back when he coached. And, and they had it as kind of a gathering place with the locker room. Well, we continued that tradition. And, yeah. and just, I won't know what to do with myself, to be honest with you. We'll, we'll build some new traditions and, and grab onto the old ones. I know. Uh, but it will be uh, definitely a different experience not running through those doors. No chance of running out just once, is there? <laughs> don't, I think, don't count anything out. No, I, <laughs> don't count anything out. But the big boys say, we built that so you could run on it yeah. here. Yeah. I can hear it now. No. Um, so, the tough one. Uh, we, we talked about it a little bit beforehand. Uh, there may have to be some adjustments, but I think we're going to get through this season. Uh, you know, the NSAA, NSAA, excuse me, is doing things right. And as I don't know whether everybody knows this, but uh, as Coach Tomlin uh, reiterated to me, that the Nate Newhouse has been going around the state conducting meetings yes. with coaches, and I'm sure that uh, everybody's ready to go forward and, and has, uh, you know, uh, I, depending on what OPS does tonight, I, I haven't heard of whether it was today or tonight, uh, some changes may have to be made, but I think we're going to get through it fine. And, you know, if um, I don't know about adding games at the end of the year during the playoffs, but everything's going to work out, I think. You might have to change a few things here sure. and there, but sure. it's, it's like you're doing now, playing a little, you know, what if, what if, what if, and the guys that are prepared can do it, which is going to be tougher in Class A maybe than it would be in a in an eight-man thing where you got a lot right. of teams, but only so many you can play. I think OPS is going to play. They might start late, but who knows? I, I hope they do. Yeah, uh, me too. I, you know, I keep telling our kids we just have to take the mentality we got to win the day. That's exactly Let's right. Let's win this first day of conditioning. Don't worry about next no. week. Nope. And when we make this the first day of conditioning successful, then we'll worry about tomorrow. And then, you know, of course, my coaches have been, we've been in meetings. We did so many Zoom meetings, I, I want to throw my computer oh off my the balcony. Oh, my gosh. But, I, you um, and me both. But just, they've been useful, you know, from, from a perspective of we've kind of ironed out, okay, let's say Coach X or Y or Z is quarantined. 
okay, how are we going to cover up for that? Well, sure, you We've have been to. trying to build contingency plans sure. and you try to build depth and and uh, I think we just take that positive approach. Hey guys, we're going to we're going to follow the the recommended protocols to the letter and we're going to we have a locker room protocol we'll follow. We're going to mask up whenever um, it's it's very very practical. We'll be ma masking sure. up and in sure. school and and uh, good diet, a lot of rest. You know, just take care of your own immune system. I think is oh, is, big, is a great thing. Big and, thing. Big thing. And I think the the big thing that I applaud the NSA for. Uh, they understand kids get the flu. Yes. They get strep throat. They get the common cold. They're also going to get COVID. Uh, just like the rest of the population, yep. and we can't necessarily shut everything down. Nope. Uh, we need to take the proper precautions and the medically recommended health department, uh, county health department, and school district's going to give us the guidelines. Right. Uh, and we'll follow those to the letter, but but uh, we I think the NSA has been realistic in that, hey, it's time for the show to go on. It is, and you roll with the punches. Yes. And, and as far as if you're a player, you just take one day at a time and just do what you're supposed to do. Leave that up to you guys. You're going to do the right thing. And I think we'll all get through it, and, and hopefully everybody will be happy at the end of the season. Some won't if they're 0-1-8 or 0-1-9. But by golly, they got to play the game, and that's, and that's the big thing. That's the big thing right now is giving these kids the opportunity to compete and, and be with their teammates and learn the lessons that, that we can teach them through football. Necessary in my Very opinion. necessary. Right. Particularly, in the, oh, particularly in, the, in the situation we're in in our nation oh, right now. So Never needed it worse than now. Never needed it worse than now. So Here's a, here's a guy to handle it right there for you. Hey, this has been great, Coach. Thank, Thank you, you very Bobby. much, man. I really appreciate you kicking off the year with us. And you bet. Uh, we'll be in touch, man. I, 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 uh, I'll be here. Got to run out of this. Ne never mind. Uh, <laughs> We'll have you running out of there. Yeah, all right. Say, hey, Coach Tomlin, thank you once thank again. You. For Carissa behind the camera, this is Bobby Mills for the Independent.com. We'll see you another day on Endzone Online.